So I'm just going to be showing you guys how you can import Megascans assets or any assets basically uh, directly into Unreal 4 for use with my Prop Master Materials V2. I've already like logged into Megascans, kind of found the, the rock that I want, and I'm just going to go to the download settings. And usually I'll, I'll choose uh, Unreal 4 because that's the program I'm going to import it into. Uh, the only change I usually make is that uh, I'll check uh, Cavity here. I usually want albedo, cavity, which I'll convert to AO in Photoshop, uh, displacement, and roughness. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these assets, we're going to import them into Photoshop, and then we're going to make a channel mask texture and set them all up for use with uh, the prop master materials. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually just going to rename some of the textures. Um, Actually, I'm just going to rename everything. So I want to say like uh, for my static mesh, which is going to be like LOD zero, I'm just going to name it uh, SM rock underscore Icelandic underscore 01A. And then uh, I can do that with my albedo as well. I'm just going to put uh, change a couple of the things, usually T for texture at the start. And then if it's diffuse map D and here, I'll just copy that paste it in my normal map except rename to n and we're going to we're going to make the channel mask texture in uh, in photoshop so we don't need to rename these yet so let's bring up photoshop and i'm just going to grab my cavity my displacement and my roughness and bring them in so here i got my my displacement my cavity and my roughness so i'm just going to grab my roughness and uh, I'm just going to double click it to unlock the layer and then rename that R and grab my cavity, which is going to be converted into my AO and uh, paste that. So say like AO Oops. and then grab my displacement and copy and paste that. And I'm just going to name that height and I'm just going to reorder these. Yeah, so, so for almost every single one of the shaders, uh, I've set up the channel mask texture so that um, roughness is going to be your red. Uh, your, either your blend mask or your, your height or displacement is going to be in green. And your AO channel, this one doesn't have one, so it's set to white, uh, is going to be in blue. And if you have metallic, it's going to be in your alpha. So if I go back to Photoshop, um, I'm just going to create a brand new layer and fill it with either white, black, whichever color. And I'm going to grab my roughness channel, copy it, and we want to paste that into the red channel of the new layer that we've created. Let's go here and then grab my height, paste that into the green channel, and then our AO, which is a cavity map right now, I'm going to paste that into the blue channel. And specifically for the, the cavity map, um, what I like to do is, is uh, bring up some of those values in it so that, you know, you kind of get a rough approximation of an AO map because by default, uh, Megascans doesn't come with AO for a lot of its meshes. So, you know, something like that where it's like mostly white with like all the cracks kind of outlined with AO. So. So now we have our channel mask texture. I'm just going to save that as uh, either JPEG, Targa, whatever you want. And uh, I'm going to use the same naming convention, except at the very end, I'm going to rename it. So it's roughness height AO. So again, uh, roughness in the red, height in the green, and AO in the blue. So save that. And then if I go back to Unreal, um, I'm just going to create a folder yeah, you guys can save your meshes wherever you want, but for this one, I'm, I'm just going to put it in my example meshes and name it the same as I did uh, my static mesh and my textures. Open that folder, navigate to the same folder where I saved out all my textures, and I'm going to grab my mesh, which is the LOD0 that came with Megascans, uh, my diffuse, my normal, and my channel mask, and I'm just going to drag and drop them directly in that folder that we just created. And just import and the very first thing you're going to want to do upon importing uh, the megascans assets or any textures uh, is you're going to want to open your channel mask and change your compression settings to masks 
right away. So that just gives you, uh, it, it makes it so it doesn't, it compresses it in a certain way so that your masks stay uh, equal to what they were before. So just always remember to change that. And specifically for Megascans assets in Unreal, um, they don't by default import uh, at the correct settings. So uh, what you need to do is flip your green channel. Let's flip that. So that's good. Now we have an, an accurate normal map. And now I'm just gonna navigate to, uh, you know, maybe like a snow detail. Let's grab that. So this is, uh, these are all my, my children master instances. I'm just gonna navigate, grab that. And I'm going to create a material instance from that. And I'm gonna drag it to my new folder that we just created. So rock Icelandic, let's put it in there. And I'm gonna grab my mesh so that you guys can see it. I'm just gonna scale it up a little bit. And I'm, I'm actually using a dynamic lighting. So sometimes on these huge meshes, you get this really weird kind of uh, distance field AO. So I'm just gonna type, uh, select the mesh and type effect and then uh, turn off effect distance field lighting. So it, like most of the time, that's not going to be an issue. It's just when you're getting these like massive objects, you get some weird artifacting. So now that I have my shader instance here, I'm just going to drag and drop that. And by default, it comes with a rock texture already, but uh, we need to change those for uh, the new textures that we just imported. So um, I'm just going to rename the shader so that it actually fits the same naming convention as my other ones. And so M at the beginning, and then I want, uh, I think it's snow Z up underscore detail. So like you could name it whatever you want, but uh, I actually grabbed this snow Z up detail. So you can mirror the same or yeah, it's snow setup detail rock. So you could rename that snow setup detail uh, rock. And then uh, if you want to put the inst tag at the end of it, it's like some of these material names get really, really long. But as far as I know, there's just no way around that. So, so I'm actually just going to open up my, my global coverage blueprint. So with this, you can just change the way that the snow kind of blends into it. Uh, but I'm just going to go into my base shader for my, my rock, and then I'm going to enable checkbox, um, like override the default settings for uh, my textures, and then I'm just going to drag and drop the new ones in there. So you can fiddle with the amount of snow here. Um, but one thing that that uh, one thing that you need to know is that right now, uh, like the, the way that the, the shader actually works is um, in your channel mass texture, it's actually using the height map in here to actually help uh, the Z up and the snow, uh, like your top layer blend in properly to your mesh. So um, if if you don't actually plan on using tessellation on this object, this height map is actually just a blend mask. So I actually find uh, you know, if you have like a physically accurate height map here, it, you know, sometimes gives you like kind of weird results a little bit uh, when you, you like you, you can still like see the blending works properly. But um, I usually like to kind of add a little bit of contrast to this height map. And keep in mind, if uh, you are using tessellation on this and it does need to be a physically accurate uh, displacement map, then I would stay with this, right? But, you know, we're, we're not using tessellation on this mesh. And for like 99% of your meshes, you shouldn't be using tessellation anyway. So this is basically just a blend mask. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Photoshop and I'm going to select my channel mask and go to my green channel where my blend mask is. And uh, I'm just going to add a bit of contrast to it. So if I go here, actually, I'm just going to use a legacy here. Find you kind of get better results. You know, just add 
add more contrast. So that'll help the, the snow blend in in uh, the kind of whiter and lighter areas and uh, remain unseen in the dark areas. And I'm just going to save this texture, overwrite my old channel mask. Go back into Unreal and I'm just going to re-import that. So now you get kind of more like a more punchy kind of version of uh, of your blend. So in here you can kind of see it. So that's cool. Like I, I really like that. That's good. And you know, you could go into your, your shader and you know, you could play around with uh, your detail visibility and, and a bunch of other things. But you know, like I, I'm actually, I'm, I'm quite happy with uh, just the kind of default look it has right now. But um, one thing you might want to do is with like a big rock like this, you can actually just uh, remove uh, some of the snow in key areas uh, just so that snow kind of never goes there and you get, it's not as noisy all over the place. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to increase uh, my blend so that I can really, really see that snow. And then uh, I'm going to go into the vertex painting mode here. And, you know, everything is done through your blue channel. And uh, it's basically you have to paint black to erase the snow, right? So if I hold shift, then uh, I can actually manually manually uh, paint out some of that stuff. And, like, you probably shouldn't be doing this for most things. But, you know, I, I kind of like just on these big kind of surfaces, like having a few areas that just doesn't get nearly as uh, nearly as coated in snow and then it just becomes a bit less noisy all over the place, right? So let's just paint out some of that stuff in here. You know, you could add a little bit back in key areas if you want by uh, just clicking instead of holding shift. Okay, so now if I select my snow, you know, you get get a nice snow coverage across uh, the whole thing. And it's all procedural. It's pretty, uh, pretty good result, like right away. So that's pretty good. I actually, uh, actually really liked the result that came out of it. And it was super quick. Um, yeah, and if you guys haven't tried mega scans, like go check it out. It's like, like some of their assets are just the best. So thanks for watching, and uh, if you guys enjoyed the video, just uh, be sure to like and subscribe, and drop a comment. Thanks.